laity around him for the blessing and consecration of the oils that will be used in all our parishes in the coming year. This year, in spite of a pandemic, we still gather. Our assembly here at the Chantry is small. Those of us who still see each other regularly, Father Tony Harold, myself, and our seminarians, Dominic Wynn, Dane Dickinson, and Cameron Costello. But we gather aware that so many others are joining us over the internet, and if not able to do so, in silent prayer in their hearts. We are so grateful for all of you. Welcome. Here, the oil of the sick, used to strengthen and console and heal those who are affirm, will still be blessed. Here, the oil of catechumens, used to strengthen and free those who are preparing for baptism, will still be blessed. Here, the sacred chrism, used to ordain bishops and priests, to confirm and to dedicate churches and altars, will still be consecrated. And here, too, we will still witness the rite of recommitment to ministry by our priests. Father Harold, our Vicar General, will give voice to their promises. May our presence at the Chrism Mass via the Internet, in the prayer of our hearts, be a sign of our support and gratitude for their ministry. And a reminder that baptism calls all of us, now more than ever, to lives of service. Jesus Christ has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. We, Jesus Christ, have made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. <clears throat> to him be glory and power forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you.
let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that, being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book, it, book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God to comfort all who mourn to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of, garden, of gladness in place of mourning and, glory, and a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. <coughs> you yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God shall you be called. I will give them their recompense fully, faithfully. A lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may always be with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the A reading from the book of Revelation. 
grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of, scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He enrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is different, huh? So you do what you got to do under the circumstances. So we're uh, in Holy Week. We've, we've begun Holy Week. And Holy Week, of course, focuses on the end of Jesus' ministry, on the end of his life, his passion, his death. But in the Gospel passage, we heard about the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Jesus says he is the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, which we heard about in the first reading from Isaiah. What are the glad tidings that Jesus brings to us today in the midst of the anxiety and adversity of the coronavirus pandemic? What is the liberty and release that he offers us as we are held captive in our homes? Clearly, this pandemic is a terrible thing. It is wreaking havoc in the United States and around the world. Why is God doing to this to us? Well, God doesn't cause evil. God 
is, didn't cause the coronavirus, then why did God allow it to happen? I don't pretend to have answers to all questions like, like that. All I know is that God um, permits evil at times to bring about a greater good. God can turn to the good everything that happens to us, even the bad things. So what is the greater good that we can find in this um, pandemic? What can COVID-19 teach us? What can we learn from it? It has focused our attention very quickly on the finiteness and fragility of human life. Here's how Pope Francis puts it. He says that the pandemic has exposed our vulnerability and uncovered the false and non-essential certainties around which we have constructed our daily schedules, projects, habits, and priorities. It has laid bare our misconceptions of what nourishes our souls. It has uncovered once more our common humanity, our belonging as brothers and sisters. The p pandemic has forced us to quiet down and slow down. It has placed limits on our busy lives and, and schedules. It has given us the opportunity to remember who we are and to reconnect with the goodness that is within us and in our families, our parishes, and our communities. The coronavirus has forced us to be intentional about keeping up our human connections. People are asking their elderly neighbors if they need any groceries. Some people are putting holiday lights back on their houses to spread some cheer. Many of us have seen those online images of people finding ways to sing and dance together while respecting the boundaries of social distancing. Priests are leave, live streaming the mass, the rosary, and other devotions. Although this play can seem so meaningless, there is a potential for it to be one of the most meaningful periods of our lives. Probably many of us, perhaps most of us, are familiar with Viktor Frankl. He spent many years in a concentration camp during the Holocaust. And he said that we don't get to choose our difficulties, but we have the freedom to select our responses. He maintained that meaning comes from three things. The, the work we offer in times of crisis, the love we give, and our ability to display courage in the face of suffering. As been said, don't waste a crisis. Let's not waste this crisis. Pope Francis says that this is a time of choosing. It's a time to choose what matters and what passes away. It is a time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It is a time to get our lives back on track with regard to God and others. A lot of people are choosing to have deeper conversations and ask more fundamental questions. There's a line from Psalm 91 that speaks to us at this time. The plague that prowls in the darkness you will not fear. The plague that prowls in the darkness you will not fear. 365 times in the sacred scriptures, Jesus, God tells us and Jesus tells us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. We have spiritual resources to address our fear. We have community resources to cope with our anxiety. This pandemic, as terrible as it is, has the potential 
to be a meaningful moment in our individual lives, our families, our parishes, our communities, our nation, our world, and our church. God will be with us through it all, and we will be with God and with one another, spiritually and virtually. So, Father Tony, you're the only priest here to renew um, the priestly promises. So you're, you are the proxy for the rest of the priests and so as a vicar general. And so all of you priests that are at home or wherever you are, please um, respond to the, renew your priestly promises along with Father Tony. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles, and on us. Are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? I am. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and conforming, confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church? which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledge on the day of your priestly ordination. I am. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to just discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? I am. As for you, my dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Pray graciously hear us. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us shepherds and flock to eternal life. Bishop Zinkula, mindful of the sick and dying, especially during this pandemic, the people of the Diocese of Davenport ask that you bless the oil of the sick so that those who are anointed with this oil will experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. O oh God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, 
your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Bishop Zinkula, mindful especially of those elect whose initiation is postponed this year, the people of the Diocese of Davenport ask that you bless the oil of the catechumens so that through anointing with this oil our catechumens who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism will be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. O oh God, strength and protection of your people who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and may, made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Bishop Zinkula, longing for the day that we can gather again in our churches, the people of the Diocese of Davenport ask that you consecrate the sacred chrism, so that through anointing with this perfumed oil, children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained will experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit and that churches and altars would be dedicated to God's glory. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God, the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O God, author of the sacraments and bestower, bestower of life, we give thanks for your ineffable goodness. For in the ancient covenant, you foreshadowed the mystery of sanctifying oil. And in the fullness of time, you will that it might shine forth uniquely in your beloved Son. And when your Son, our Lord, had saved the human race through the Paschal mystery, he filled your church with the Holy Spirit and wonderfully endowed her with heavenly gifts, so that 
through her the work of salvation in the world might be brought to completion. From that time onward, through the sacred mystery of chrism, you have so bestowed the riches of your grace upon all humanity that your sons and daughters, born again in the cleansing waters of baptism and strengthened by the anointing of the Spirit and conformed to your Christ, they share in his prophetic, priestly, and kingly kingly office. Therefore, we beseech you, O Lord, that by the power of your grace, this mingling of fragrant fragrance and oil may become for us a sacrament of your blessing. Pour out in abundance the gifts of the Holy Spirit on our brothers and sisters anointed with this oil. Adorn with the splendor of holiness the places and things signed by sacred oils. But above all, by the mystery of this oil, bring to completion the growth of your church until she reaches that measure of fullness in which you, resplendent with eternal light, will be all in all with Christ in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the power of this sacrament, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us the grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he, has, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed in the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed, with, uh, with your blessed, with blessed Joseph, your first spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop. The order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I will sing forever your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. announcements. So <laughs> please, we welcome you if you'd like to join us um, for the Triduum services at St. Paul the Apostle. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.